the Benghazi transcripts, pulling back the curtain on what really happened the night of the Benghazi terror attack. Fox News has obtained previously top secret documents and transcripts indicating what President Obama knew and when he knew it and why the U.S. did not get help there in time. We have Fox team coverage tonight. Jennifer Griffin at the Pentagon on what led to the military's lack of preparation and slow response that night. But we begin with Chief Washington correspondent James Rosen. Previously secret information about that tragic night. Good evening, James. Brett, good evening. Fox News has gotten first look at 450 pages of sworn testimony by America's highest ranking military officers that reveal what they and President Obama knew about Benghazi from the earliest moments. The assault on the U.S. consulate in Benghazi began at 9.42 Libya time on the night of September 11, 2012. And within 15 minutes, General Carter Hamm, the head of AFRICOM, was notified. Hamm told the House Armed Services Subcommittee on Oversight and Investigations in June 2013, my first call was to General Dempsey, General Dempsey's office, to say, hey, I am headed down the hall. I need to see him right away. I told him what I knew. We immediately walked upstairs to meet with Secretary Panetta. Then Defense Secretary Leon Panetta and General Martin Dempsey, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, were already scheduled to see President Obama in the Oval Office on different subjects. Congressman Buck McKeon, the Republican chairman of the Armed Services Committee, asked Ham, in your discussions with General Dempsey and Secretary Panetta, was there any mention of a demonstration or was all discussion about an attack? We knew, Ham testified, that a U.S. facility had been attacked and was under attack, and we knew at that point that we had two individuals, Ambassador Stevens and Mr. Smith, unaccounted for. First-term GOP Congressman Brad Wenstrup of Ohio, a veteran of the Iraq war, pressed the issue. As a military person, I am concerned that someone in the military would be advising that this was a demonstration. I would hope, Wenstrup added, that our military leadership would be advising that this was a terrorist attack. Again, sir, Ham testified, I think, you know, there was some preliminary discussion about, you know, maybe there was a demonstration, but I think at the command, I personally, and I think the command very quickly got to the point that this was not a demonstration, this was a terrorist attack. And you would have advised as such if asked, would that be correct? Well, and with General Dempsey and Secretary Panetta, Ham said, that is the nature of the conversation we had. Yes, sir. In February of last year, Panetta told the Senate he introduced the subject of Benghazi to Obama on the night of 9-11. There was no question in my okay, mind my, it was a my, terrorist my, attack. Yet as he battled for re-election, President Obama and his top aides pressed a false narrative of the attacks, and Panetta said nothing publicly to correct it. It was reported that people just went crazy and wild because of this anti-Muslim movie, or anti-Muhammad, I guess, movie. But then I heard uh, Hillary Clinton say that it was an act of terrorism. Is it? What do you say? Well, we're still doing an investigation. He is in the president's cabinet. The American people deserve the truth. Well, Leon Panetta should have spoken up to the president directly. The people at the Pentagon and, frankly, the people at the CIA uh, stood back while all of this was unfolding and allowed this narrative to go on longer than they should have. The commander of AFRICOM's Joint Special Operations Task Force, Colonel George Bristol, testified that, quote, no one from the military was ever advising that this was a demonstration gone out of control, unquote. Now, tomorrow, we'll reveal more from the Benghazi transcripts, including evidence on whether the White House willfully misled the American people on how well-prepared President Obama was on September 10 of 2012. Brett. And James, you reached out to Leon Panetta and the White House. That's right. We sent an email to uh, Panetta's former chief of staff, still very close to the former secretary, no response. And at the White House press briefing today, Press Secretary Jay Carney, who knew I was there and why I was there, declined to call on me for a question. Go on back tomorrow. I will. Okay. James, thank you.